Second Peter chapter one verse five. five. Second Question Peter one verse five. Dealing with the preaching on plan. Hallelujah. It is important that you plan. You plan your life. You plan everything. And for some time now, I think the last week I was talking about the six or five components that would help you plan your Christian life. Amen. Amen. The era when we just came and felt spiritual and uh, you, you, we just spiritualize you and let you go. And then you go and nothing is changing. I think was an era of maturity, not immaturity. Because you've got to mature into, hallelujah. We are still spiritual, but there are certain things we need to deal with. Amen. Amen. The Bible declares that the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. However, it says that God has given this earth to the sons of men. Amen. Uh, the reason why they cannot go to space without putting on special space shooters because space has not been given to the sons of men. Hallelujah. The earth has been given to us, so you don't need any special suit to be termed an astronaut or cosmonaut before you fly to space. Amen. Amen. So we, it is our responsibility to do what we have to do before the evil days. Ecclesiastes says that there's a day coming that uh, it, the Bible terms it the evil day when your strength will wane and before you can even get up somebody has to do what help you hallelujah there's a day coming when you you would would have loved to and Samson said i will arouse myself like the former times but it was too late the secret to who Samson was was so cheaply and i read the bible and i uh, 30 judas was not the only person that betrayed christ Samson betrayed God by revealing the secret of what made him who he was. Amen. Easily. For morsel of bread, Esau betrayed God by selling his childbirth, his, uh, the destiny concerning his child uh, right, as right as the eldest, easily. And, and, and birthright, it can easily go on, easily go on, and easily go on. And I believe that as believers, it will be an act of irresponsibility for you to think God created you to occupy the space. No, God created you. The reason why no one can do what you do is because you are created. Nobody can occupy the space which is yours as because God created you for that. The reason why nobody can take the blessing, the prosperity, or the success which God created you for is because God created you for that. The worst that can come out of it is you not doing anything and then appearing before God. Am I speaking to somebody? If you don't do it, it will be there. And out of maybe mercy or pity, God will call one of your children to do exactly what you'd have wished to do. Hallelujah. And Jesus says in John chapter 9, that the night coming, now is the time for me to do the work of the one that sent me. He said, the night coming. When no man can do anything. There's a day and a time coming when what you would have wished to do it'll be too difficult and too late but i pray we will be wise before those days jesus told the disciples i'm sending you into the mist mist of lions be smart like the snake and be humble like the dove so that you know how to survive in these times am i helping somebody it is your responsibility to plan your life to plan your life Plan everything concerning your life. Plan. Be responsible for the decisions that you make going forward. When you're a child from zero probably to 18, it is somebody who makes a decision for you. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians said, When I was a child, I used to think like a child. Now that I have become, God is interested 
in your becoming based on the plans he has given now that i have become a man i would it is my responsibility to put away childish behavior childish behavior imagine a uh, 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 30 40 50 year old behaving like a child there's one thing the person will be session because it is anti anti norm, uh, abnormal or anti growth for a 50 year old to begin to behave like a child I want, I, and 50 years and people are like what's wrong with you I want very life if you don't give me very life I will be on myself immediately they'll call the ambulance said there's a madman here am I speaking to someone here nobody is going to come and do that for you nobody will come and do that for you. Nobody will come and do that for you. And so you have to do these things. You see, I believe. I see. I hear. I discern. I do all these things. I believe in the existence of witches. I believe in the existence of para, para humans. They are partly humans, partly uh, spirit. And, and, and I believe there are people with the power to uh, go into the spirit. And I believe in all these things. Just as you believe in. But the difference probably between your belief and my belief is that at the end of the day, I have power because I believe in Christ Jesus. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes, there might be a determination against your destiny, but you have power. There might be this curse in the family line, but you have power. There might be this disease in the family line, but you have power. And it will be an act of irresponsibility for you to surrender your power. You see, we used to read that Adam sinned. That Adam did not sin. What he did was he gave away power. And because he gave away power, the consequences of him giving away the power, firstly, was sinning. I want to speak to somebody. So in Luke chapter 4, Jesus said, Oh, when Satan attacked Jesus after he had fasted for 40 days, guess what Satan told him? He said, If you worship me, I will, for it has been what? Delivered unto me. Who gave him that? It wasn't God, it was Adam. Amen. Tell somebody I've got to take my power back. Oh, tell another person that you can take your power back. Tell them you can take your healing back. You can take your peace back. Everything concerning your life, you can take it back. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen? Amen. So, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse That's 5, fine. we are talking about sort of the five or six components that will make a difference. In order for you to plan your life. The second thing I want you to understand that. It is not too late to plan your life. Don't stay in that abusive relationship. Under the auspices of praying. You can't pray more than God. Who created that. Uh, created you and created that individual. You see the heart of man is wicked above all things. A person can choose to be what they want to be. You are not anointed. More than the apostle Paul, when uh, God told him, uh, to, in him writing to Timothy, he said, flee, flee. You are not anointed more than David, who said, I learned how to run through troops, leap over walls. Sometimes, even strong David had to run for his life. You stay there. I was thinking to somebody. You are no more anointed than them. But at some point, the spirits need them. You think it's every warfare we fight? No. I'm not going to stand here and tell you it's everything I fight on your behalf. There are some people here, I just wait to, hey, wait. I laid hands on somebody, went to bed that night. I laid hands on somebody. Part that I, that I drove with one hand home. Thank God for automatic cars. I was in pain on that. That part I laid my hands, that same part, for two hours. When we went home, I was, uh, my anointed wife prayed for me. She prayed. Please, she prayed. Then I was praying, praying, praying. God, what is it? Half of my body. I said, no, no. And the Holy Spirit reminded me. Then I remembered. I said, ah, Satan, you're in the wrong place. Come out. Then I went into the shower, had a nice shower. Afterwards, my wife, I called my wife. He said, my Lord, bring me my food. <laughs> the pain vanished. 
I believe in all those things. But it shouldn't stop you from planning. Am I speaking to someone? Plan your Christian life. There's coming a day and a time you will die. I will die. It will be too late. I mean, the thing about the ceremony that surrounds when a person dies is an interesting one. One man said, live your life well so that when you die, we don't have to lie. You get the joke later. You're a bad person. I come and stand here. This individual was good. I'm lying. And the Bible is against lying. So what do I say? This man, eh, eh, eh. I'll be eh, 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 until the service finish. She starts calling me Pastor Eh. Am I speaking to somebody? Plan your life. Plan your finance. It's not everyone that you should sow money into. It's not every vision that you should put your money into. Greed often leads us in places we call the blessing of God. If God was the one that blessed that project, you wouldn't need to sweat about it. Because he makes a way. He, 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 he lead it. He lead it. If God leads you, it means you're going into the right places. If God leads you, if God makes the way, it means the way cannot be unmade. I must forget to somebody. Many of us think we are late.
great. You are God all by yourself. Yes, Lord. Lord, you created creation and you are never limited by your creation. You created time, but you are never limited by your time. Indeed. Yes, Lord.
better for our backup singer our backup singer amen <laughs> hallelujah please lift up your hands wherever you are it's a month of prayer and uh, our minister has already taken us through why we need to pray I want you to tell God God this month give me the strength to pray Jesus told the disciples that men ought to pray and not to faint. Whatever will be an excuse, whatever will be an in that I can make time to pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and speak to God. I want to be a prayerful person this month. And so God, I require divine strength. I require power. I require endurance in this season. Come on, pray. 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 I require that ability. I want to be able to pray. And so therefore, Jehovah, I come to you asking for extra strength. Extra strength to be able to stand and defend my destiny. To be able to stand and defend the God, the goodness of God over my life. To be able to stand, Jehovah, for the sake of my destiny. For the sake of your purpose, over my life, over my life, over my life. Come on, lift up your voice and pray. Libra This month I will pray. This month I will pray. I will pray for my sons. I will pray for my daughters. I will pray for the church. Every hidden mystery concerning my destiny. This month I'm taking charge. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated with a clap offering, amen. And we bless God for our dear Benedicta sister's life and also her professional backup singer, amen. If you are doing anything you require a backup singer, please contact Sister Ellen. She will do the backup, hallelujah. We bless God. We know God will move us from glory to glory. We, we got ourselves uh, stuck in a traffic. And I, I know that most people <laughs> were also caught in it. Amen. 
but we are still in the house hallelujah hallelujah amen it is our responsibility also to teach us on what jesus requires so we're still continuing with our series on godly leadership tell somebody godly leadership kingdom agenda tell another person godly leadership kingdom agenda now for some time now i told you and i made a promise that i believe this year my teaching would be about the kingdom the kingdom it's a year where i'm going to spend most of my time on the kingdom hallelujah and that i'm believing god that through our teaching our lives will be blessed we will understand the kind of kingdom that we belong to amen and that if if the bible requires that precept upon pre precept line upon line and then god told moses that build according to the pattern and this is the challenge with many people because we want our churches not to build according to the pattern of god but according to the uh, pr marketing strategies of the world if you build anything according to the wrong foundation 20 years to come you would have to go back and rebuild again if you want to go to a hallelujah so we want to build this kingdom that we have the privilege of belonging to according to god's way amen kingdom businesses kingdom visions kingdom marriages kingdom children this is our agenda so that we we find ourselves all wrapped up with the word of god not with the strategies of the world hallelujah because when you when it comes to the strategies of the world they are changing every day amen but the word of god has never changed the power the power in the word is rather increasing amen so it's our it's our plan that we will keep teaching about the kingdom this year and that you become a kingdom man and a kingdom woman hallelujah amen. and that your family will be a kingdom family amen, amen. obeying the principle look we are not going anywhere hallelujah am i speaking to somebody we are staying to prove that god is able to pick a man out of the miry clay and change their lives that's what we are here for amen, amen. we are not in a rush we are not in a rush it is our desire that we teach kingdom principles that you see you've been nurtured up nurtured up with kingdom principles that wherever you go they will know you're a kingdom person and that you truly have been nurtured by the word by the word of god hallelujah amen and last week we were talking about godly leadership and i believe that we're able to explain to us that there's a difference between being gifted hallelujah and being called into leadership and i also made the reference that having children is a leadership job altogether if your children fail it's because you're a bad leader am i helping somebody if after now that you know if your marriage fails based on godly principles it means you're a bad leader Hey, somebody <laughs> am i helping somebody because our assignment is to teach on kingdom principles now and, and, and with kingdom family uh, june is our month of uh, the family kingdom fam you hear about how we have to raise our families bear the principles of god amen many of us show up here but i tell you how many of us will be honest to say we start we pray for our children once in a while you come to church and the pastor led by the spirit let's pray for our children you do that and that's it but you've forgotten that you're a target and that your family is a target the greatest blessing a man or a woman can leave on earth it's not the houses it's your child that bears your name hello it's a child that bears your name that will be a carrier we call it transgenerational blessing so whatever we, how far you brought the blessing of God to they will pick it up and carry it growing up in Kumasi there was a popular lawyer called lawyer Toto his son is also lawyer what his grandson would also be what oh you are 
Am I helping somebody? Am I helping somebody? So you see, if we fail now that we know, it does not matter how far the enemy thinks he's taken. Drag your children, drag your vision, drag that marriage. Now that you get to know, knowledge means power. There's got to be transformation. The devil is afraid of you becoming knowledgeable. And that is why he keeps us in ignorance. What you don't know, he holds you responsible. Hallelujah. What you know, you are empowered to deal with the, the, the effects thereof from what you know. Am I helping somebody? Amen. So you see, we have that mandate. Tell somebody, I have that mandate. Because I belong to the kingdom. And that by virtue of that, I have to practice kingdom principles in all that I do. Am I helping somebody? It is a lie that your children will fail. It, it's a lie. Then you don't belong to this kingdom. <laughs> it is a lie that your vision will fail. Then you don't belong to this kingdom. It is a liar that your health will fail. Then you don't belong to this kingdom. Am I helping somebody? You see, there's a difference between hearing of the principles. A challenge, however, is putting the principles to work. If the enemy cannot stop you from hearing, he moves your warfare to practicing. So he cannot stop you from hearing. He's done everything to stop you. You're here. Traffic jam. You're in church. Amen. We will, no, because we live in that uh, God's country, God's town, Milton Keynes. That's where God, uh, God comes from. You see, most of the times, M1 is blocked. But I'm so adventurous. We use the A5 road. Sometimes we use all the A5 by the time we realize you are in Enfield. We have to be in church at all costs. The devil cannot stop you and I. Am I helping somebody? You have to be very careful when it comes to approaching God and none flimsy, flimsy excuses. You will go nowhere. If truly you want God to bless you, if truly, I'm telling you, if truly you require blessings out of the hands of God, then be, be very careful of flimsy excuses. Pastor, I woke up and my teeth, my teeth, my teeth. So you're telling me that your teeth, what do I have to do? My friend comes to church, because of my teeth, my teeth, my teeth, I can't take paracetamol. Amen? Because since the days of John the Baptist, we quote that scripture and we don't understand it. Since the day, sometimes I am coming to church and I have, when I say I have popped enough pills because the night I suffered from cold and all that, but I would tell myself, if I have to come to church and die here, I prefer that. So para will follow and nightness will follow. The next morning, I'm driving and my wife has to be praying because the driving is angelic. But we have to get to church. I'm helping them. I can't stand people who full of excuses. Anytime you give excuse, God moves back. Because what you are telling God is, I can't do it. But he's saying you can do it. And you are saying, no, I can't do it. Am I helping somebody? This kingdom suffers violence. The enemy is after you. So you have to be after the enemy. I'm helping some. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11, it says, Do, we are not ignorant of his devices, lest the enemy should gain advantage. Don't allow Satan to gain advantage of your life by, by little, little things. Hello? Most of you, you think Sunday is the only time we worship. We meet here also on Friday. You have decided. It is an excuse. You have time on Friday. Not every, you don't work every Friday. I know that for a fact. But guess what? We're used to a system where the enemy is getting you because he's telling you it's only Sunday. But God can bless you any day. And I pray you don't miss your day. Hello? I said I pray you don't miss your day. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. We started with Ephesians and today I want us to look at the 10 myths of godly leadership. Amen. Or the 10 uh, misconceptions about what it means for you to be in godly leadership. Last week I was able to explain to us that God gave some apostles, some teachers, some prophets, some pastors, and some evangelists for the perfecting of the saints. The fivefold ministry is God's avenue of godly leadership. Hello? And we went to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and we talked about the fact that the Bible also talks about gifts. 
And the fact that you are gifted does not mean you've been called into leadership. Hallelujah. It is your ability to remain faithful and travel with God with the gift that he's given you that he calls you into leadership. Many are called, but few are chosen. Am I helping somebody? The few that are chosen are the few God has called into leadership, not into giftings. I started seeing when I was about 12 years. We used to live at USD. We were living closer to a cemetery. When we gather around with the, uh, you know, you live uh, uh, flat A, flat B. I'll tell them, look, I see somebody standing there. And they'll be like, hey, what are you seeing? Are you a witch? Everything in Ghana is a witch. Then I'll tell them, look, I see. Look, there's, a, there's somebody standing there. And everyone will bolt for, they will all run to, into their houses. And we all run because I, I was telling them. It didn't mean I was called into leadership. It was just a gift. Amen. Leadership is a journey you and God have to travel. Until God calls you. Now, now, now. When Samuel was anointing King Saul, he said something. Is it not because the Lord has called you to be a captain over his people, not to be a king? Hello? That you, you, he said, is it not because the Lord has called you to be a captain? The captain is not the same as a what? As a king. Amen? It, you have to go through the processes. You have to go through. God has to find. Because why? Leaders are given potential positions. And God would never. Matthew 7. He said do not cast that witches. A uh, gold before a swine. Nor uh, give that which is worthy to a dog. Hello? So God can give you the gift. To start you off. It doesn't mean he's called you into what? Leadership. If you wait on God and he finds you faithful, he will call you into his own kind of leadership. Hallelujah. And so he gave some apostles, some teachers, some evangelists, some pastors. And then like I was explaining where in Bible school, one person said, because the name of the apostle was mentioned first, it means the apostle is the most important No. One person says, because there's the prophet comes, the prophet can see, can discern. The prophet is the most important of all the offices. No, none of these offices are better than the other. But the practiceness of these offices, if they put in the work, they'll become better, 10 times better than their colleagues. Hello? Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Diligence is the key to rising above all your contemporaries. People are busy uh, uh, doing whatever. We are busy in church. There's no way you and I. There's no way. I refuse to accept that I show up in church on Friday. Drive 60 miles in. Drive 60 miles on Friday. In and out. 120. Then Sunday. And we will be on the same level of eloquence. Elocution. And the same level of the anointing. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Hello? It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. God rewards faithfulness. The effort you put in is what determines the kind of anointing that God releases onto a person's life. Amen. See, you want to be rich, but it is a known fact that most rich people wake up 4 a.m. Two hours before the world. You are sleeping till night. You want to be wealthy. And I'm saying there are two shops. Shop A and Shop B. Shop A understands the principle of what it means to travel before you get to the place God has destined for you. So guess what? Shop A opens at 8 a.m. Amen. Shop A is a Christian. Loves the Lord. Tongue speaking. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. Shop B is a Christian. Loves the Lord. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. But you see the, the natural laws. There are natural laws. There are spiritual laws. Natural law says that whatever you sow you will reap. Hallelujah. So shop A opens at 8 a.m. Shop B opens at 12 p.m. They're all Christians, spirit-filled, love the same God, claim to know God. Which one of them do you think will be successful quicker? Shop A. Why? Because shop A understands the power of diligence. Amen. Shop A is a spiritualized Christian who lacks spirituality. Because he believes that, oh, our God is able. Our God is able. 
until shop B closes and shop A will be thriving and expanding. It is not because shop A was praying more than shop B. It is because one tapped into a key and the key is what releases us where you want to go. In terms of God's kind of leadership, people listen. Wait, God has everyone's date on his calendar. If you're faithful, I used to work, I used to work in JJB Sports, Newbury Park, Wolfenstone. I used to work in Brent Cross. I would wear my JJB Sports uniform and come here on Fridays and come and lead prayers and I used to lead praise and worship here. I've got some old videos from 2002. I used to lead praise and worship here. Hallelujah. We didn't just rise to this place. I am not here because it's my father's church where I've been part of this church from the inception. Even when we're in the other church where the pastor would beat people up, I was there. Amen. Pay the price. And in due time, when God will find you faithful, he will crown you into that position before all men. Am I helping somebody? Am I helping somebody? Where you want to go, decide to pay the price. Tell somebody where you want to go. Pay the price. You don't just rise to be a good father because I gave birth to you. And by all means, you have to respect me. No, there's got to be what the child needs to do. To see. To see you do. That they will respect you. Respect is not just in words. I'm your mother. You, what example are you showing that child for the child to believe? But you, because if we, we often make the mistake and assume that they also don't know what the word of God is, they know. You tell them, let's pray. You are, you are snoring. <laughs> oh, let's pray. The child is looking at you and thinking, hmm, this woman does not believe in what she's saying. Why should I believe it? They hear you on the phone. They hear you all the time. And said so you turn around and the Bible says, leave, uh, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. But you were talking about neighbor B, that he's got a big head. Little, little things. Amen. If you want to know if a people are angry at you as a pastor, look at the way their children will relate to you every time they see you. If you want to know if family is talking negatively about you, the pastor, anytime you see their children, kids have a pure heart. They can't lie. Hello? Grown-ups can pretend. If you want to know, look at the way the family, the kids in the family will relate to you. If they turn towards you, you're on board. If the, the kids, not the grown-ups. Grown-ups, we are good in pretending. Am I helping somebody? If you want to know if a family loves you, the first sign is that anytime their kids will see you, they run. If the kids see you and they are looking at you with 240, it means mommy and daddy are insulting you in that house. Pray for their deliverance. I'm <laughs> helping somebody. Uh, 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 many years ago in uh, the other church, uh, and many, many, the bishop had his own friend, this little fat boy. He, he was so fat, he was cute. Amen. And he would come in, my friend. Then, one Sunday, the man saw Bishop. Hello, uh, uh, hello, someone. And and immediately the man left. The fat boy came to Bishop. He said, "My mom was calling you Kwasia on the phone." <laughs> Kids are innocent. The kid went to you and said, "My mom was calling you stupid," with and made mention of the name of the person they were talking to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You, you're not going to be where you want to be because you want to. What price are you paying? Amen? Anything God calls you for, it means you're a leader in what he's called you for. But you have to pay the price. David was anointed a king in Judah, not over Israel. He had to fight for Jerusalem. First time in Judah. He was anointed to be a king when he was 16 years. Became actually a king when he was 40. Over a group of people, not even the entirety of the nation, he had to fight. So people, you see, leadership that many people of us, many of us are rushing into. Leadership is not so glamorous as you think it is. And I'm going to uh, talk about 10 myths and or misconceptions about what leadership isn't. Amen. The first misconception or myth about leadership is that leadership, it's not about position. Hello? Kingdom leadership 
It's not about positions. Titles don't mean anything to God. Service and commitment. Service and commitment is what defines your stance with God. Amen? Leadership means nothing. It is not about position. Leadership isn't about position. Amen? It is not about position. Please come. Come. Quick, quick, quick. Now, old time leadership, follow me. This is old time leadership. When I'm falling, make sure you carry me. Okay. Old time leadership. Time my lace for me. Quick. My friend, be quick, be quick, be quick. It's okay. Old time leadership. Amen. People will serve you because of what they can get from you. Old time leadership. New time leadership. You don't serve me. I serve you. You don't serve me. I do what? I serve you. Regardless of my position in the church. You don't serve me. I do what? I serve you. The old, it's not about position. It's about service and commitment. Am I helping somebody? The first misconception that many of us have about leadership is that, oh, as long as he, he has that position, it means he's a leader. No, no, no. You can have the position and there'll be someone in there who is seven and is committed and they have significance before the people and even before God. Amen. Old time, it's not about position. As long as I'm your resident, uh, I'm now the senior pastor. As long as I'm your senior pastor, when you see me every Sunday, you have to give me money. No, no, no. If he wants to bless me, it is out of love and the service I've rendered. He's not under any duress, any obligation to honor me. But a calling for new type, new testament leadership, I have to honor him. I have to learn how to honor him. Amen. Amen. Do you know why we intentionally decided that when we have church uh, parties and everything, all the past, we will sit in front of you and eat. Because we want you to understand we are in the same boat. And it's by grace. Amen. A couple of my friends came over and I said, oh, well, there's no special place for any pastor. My friend said that. He said it would be difficult. I said it's not difficult for those of us who are here. Because I can sit in, doctor can sit there, bishop can sit there. We will eat for you to know we are also eating. So when we call you for prayer, you also join us. Because if we can eat with you, we can also pray with you. Am I helping somebody? Kingdom leadership, it's not about position. It's not about position. Please be seated. Give a clap on, on, onto the Lord for their life. It is not about position. We are not about position here. It's about your service. How have you served the people of God? What do you know about them? How are you interceding for them with regards to the challenges they face? I am able to effectively preach to us because I know many of us. And I labor for many of us in our prayers, in our fasting. That is why when I stand and I'm preaching, I do not shoot off tangent. I'm, I'm addressing the challenges we face in house. That is effective service and commitment. So the first myth that once you're called a leader, it's all about your position. It's a wrong myth. There's nothing like position, but a service and commitment to God. Am I helping somebody? Am I helping somebody? Jesus has anointed as he was. One day he took his towel and decided to wash the feet of the disciples. Peter said no. He was so used to the old type of leadership. He thought leadership was all about position. Jesus said no, 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 no. If I don't wash your feet, you're not part of me. I'm doing this so you'll be able to do it for the next person. And that, that the next person will be able to do it for the next person. And that by virtue of our doings, we would we will fill our place with service. Service. Can I be honest with you? You can be in this church if you are not committed or you are not serviceable. I don't see any value in what you are doing. I'm telling you. Amen. I don't see any value. It's all about service. People come early 
fix things so we can have a good service. By the time we finish service, people stay, fix things. So we don't own this place. So the owners will be pleased with us and renew our contract every year. Oh, you can stay here. Amen. It's not about, oh, it's your job. No, 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 no. It's our job. Am I helping somebody? Leadership in this kingdom, it's not about position. It's not about position. It's about service and it's about commitment. Tell somebody, I have to be committed in this kingdom. Hallelujah. Stephen and Philip, they were not part of the 12 apostles. But Stephen was so anointed to the point that he used to serve tables. He was a, a waiter. And the anointing of God came upon a waiter that he was able to stand before the Sanhedrin and trust them that he could say, I see Jesus standing by the right hand of God. It takes service. It takes service. Philip. Philip could vanish by the anointing. From one place to another. And what did he do? He was a deacon. Seven. Seven. Not part of the twelve apostles chosen by Jesus. Husband. Wife. Husband. You can serve your wife. Wife. You can serve a husband. Kids. You can serve your parents. Parents. You can serve your kids. By so doing we are emulating Christ. Am I helping somebody? Is somebody learning something? If you've been called as a mother, if you've been called as a father, it is not about position. It's about the service and commitment that you would render service, that you will render to your kids. And God always rewards service and commitment. Oh yes, he does. In a few years to come, you will find out that your seeds of service and commitment will grow to something glorious more than you could even imagine why because the key to touching the heart of God is a new seven is a new seven God has, so, God has been serving humanity now the Bible says he neither sleeps nor slumbers he's been a watchman for how many years he's, he's not sleeping watching over us even when we are in sin watching over us when we are asleep watching over us doing our own things watching over us Amen. So leadership, church, in this kingdom has got nothing to do with. It's got nothing to do with. It's got nothing to do with. But it's got everything to do with service and what? Service and what? How committed are you? I told my father that we are no longer going to allow anyone to joke with our ministry. Hallelujah. That it's about time we show God that we are serious. If it's going to be left with five people. It's about time we show God. And it's about time we the pastor show God that we are committed to what he's called us to. Amen. Anything from that we miss God. I am interested in committed people. Hello. I mean my friend listen. You drive something if you should put into account. Those of you from deeper south London. Outside, uh, Croydon, deeper Croydon. How many miles, if you put it into a, you take it into account? Amen. Wherever you are coming from, whether close or far off, you 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 decide that on your Sunday you won't do anything, but you show up. We drive from MK. I'm known in most premier in hotels around this area. Sometimes we have to book in and pay. The church does not pay us. My own money. So we can do what? Render service. Hello? And you will think God will not honor that sacrifice. It's only a matter of time. Amen? It's only a matter of time. Tell somebody it's only a matter of time. Number two. This kingdom. Being called into God leadership. It's not about personal aggrandizement. We are not here to make money of you. We are not here to make money off you. We are not here to build wealth off you. We are not here to make money off you. We are not here to make money off you. Church. We are not here to make money off you. Tell those of the outside world. That churches are not in place. Because they want to take your money. 
Churches are not in place because they want to take your money. No, the devil is a liar. The pastor is not in because he wants to rip you off. Amen. You work, I work. Hallelujah. Church, you work, I also work. We are not here, church, to make money off you. It's not for personal aggrandizement. God is able to bless his leaders too. It is a myth that keeps going around. Oh, the pastor said, now if you invite people to church, oh, and, I, and now churches, that are in. what church does not ask for money? Catholics do ask for money. Methodists, they do ask for money. Trust me, every church on earth requires money for functioning. We are not in for your money. Hello? We are not in. Any church you know, they raise funds. Every church will raise funds. Am I helping you? It is not for personal aggrandizement. We are here because we have been called to reach out to the people of God. I tithe. I have never missed an opportunity. I tithe more than I earn. Why? Because I believe in the God who is able to bless exceedingly, abundantly, far above. If your church member blesses you and he's the type that talks, you are in trouble. Had it not been for me, that shoe, he'd not be wearing it. it would, uh, if you seen that shirt, I gave it to him. Hallelujah. It's not about personal aggrandizement. Tell somebody, it's not for personal gain. Church, we, 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 no, 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 no. We are not in place for personal gain. Hallelujah. If you decide to come, pastor, here's a seat. Uh, here's a seat for you. Many of you have stopped blessing your pastors. It is a crime and it is a sin. Amen. I can count the number of people that have walked up to me and said, pastor, here's some money. It's been very, very long. Uh, repent. It doesn't stop me from functioning fully. Look, I'm a prophet throughout and throughout. I see, I hear, I discern, I know. I, but you, when I stand here, I, I, I pour my best out. Why? Whether if you bless or not, we are not in for personal aggrandizement. It is God who blesses. Amen? Am I helping somebody? It is God who blesses. I, I'm not, I, I, one of my friends, uh, recently wanted to something and the church told my friend that look we checked the books you've not been paying tithes so we can't help you they told my friend that my friend has not been paying tithe so they can't help him people you know the welfare thing we talked about we spend more money that we don't have from the welfare whether if you pay or you don't pay. When you are in need, it is our responsibility to step up and help. Am I helping somebody? We don't measure your membership by how much tithe you pay. Tithe is a personal covenant you make with God. You know what the Bible says concerning your tithing. It is a choice that you have to make. Am I helping somebody? Amen. So my responsibility is to teach you the, the blessing that should come out if you should put that into practice. It is not my responsibility to enforce you. And the church has never been broke. Whether if you tithe or not, the church has not been broke. But what you need to be careful of is that going against the principles of God. Am I helping somebody? It's not for personal gain. We're not here because we want to use spiritual means. And mama, the way I look at you, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's something happening in the spirit. You need 2,000 pounds to put at the altar of God. Make sure by Tuesday or something will happen. Amen. The way I look at you, you seem a very rich man. So let me manufacture a way to get money off you. Oh, the devil is a liar. <laughs> Am I helping somebody? No, 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 no. We rather want to be so rich. I told God, you have to make me so rich that I would bless church members. We would, I, you know the affordable housing I, I'm always talking about. It will happen one of these days. 
Hallelujah. We build a place where church members, I keep saying, how much do you pay for your rent? Say that we care landlord has been charging me more than necessary. So we said, no, 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 no. This is a charity. Pay this. Here's a two-bedroom or three-bedroom flat. You and your family move. But if you leave the church, give us our property back. <laughs> no, no, no. Am I helping somebody? It's not in the plan. So it's not for personal gain. We are not a ministry for personal gain. Neither should you stop blessing. I'm serious. If you bless the man of God, you get blessed quicker. I'm telling you. Many of you have pretended, hey, Pastor Joe, don't show me, my friend. My friend, learn how to oil my hands so my hands will be able to oil others. I keep telling you, every month, I have a certain amount of money I bless people with. Every month. Not that I earn a gazillion. Hallelujah. So decide that from today. When we finish service, eh, I'll be seated on my high throne. Make sure you come, Pastor. We are obedient. What you said now, here, here. So, you, you see, you can bless doctor. Don't, you see, we make a mistake. Doctor might not be in need of whatever you bless him with. But if you bless him, he's blessed. You trigger a blessing. The Bible says in Hebrews 7, without contradiction, the less is blessed of the greater. So, if you want the same blessing on him, do you know what you have to do? Don't say, Father, doctor, you made him a doctor. Make my children doctors. No! Doctor will be there and probably you are in TK Max. You see a lovely source. Doc, I was, in TK, I was thinking of you. As you sow that seed, you trigger the same blessing. Very soon, one of your children will rise to become a doctor. Too. That's how Christians we get blessed. No, we're all doctor. And he's prescribing medicine, signing your passport forms, and all you do. Ah, ah, somebody shout mercy. Oh no, shout mercy. Am I helping somebody? Ah, we, we have one doctor in the church. You wouldn't leave the man alone. Every Sunday, people will accost doctor in the corner. And he's explaining medicine. And uh, uh, that is uh, tetra, whatever. And this one will have a side effect. Thank you. If you had gone to the doc, a GP and you were to pay, repent. <laughs> Tell somebody, I have repented. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not for personal gain. In Luke chapter 22, verse 35, Jesus asked them, when I sent you, did you lack anything? It means God is the one that takes care of, his, of the people he's called. Am I helping somebody? He's the one that takes care of us. He's the one that takes care of us. Hallelujah. If the church member thinks possibly you're offering, no, 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 no. You're tithing, no, no, no. I'm quite privy to our accountant. And sometimes I ask them, so would this church ever move beyond this? But then God moves it. Am I helping somebody? Amen? Am I helping somebody? One of the ways you can, you can ask God to step in your situation it's not only by prayer. Sometimes ask God to step in your situation by also learning how to sow. You remember the teachings I taught, I taught us about the different methods of giving? The casting method. How many remember? The spreading method. How many remember? Amen. So people, we are in a, a great position that if only we were put to practice the principles of God. So godly leadership, number one, is uh, not about position. Number two, it's not about personal gain. Uh, if you're coming into ministry because you think you are going to prosper quicker, please, 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 please. There's no quicker way to prosper. Even those of these Ghanaian popular preachers, you think they are, some started 30 years ago. Your old brother Obinim started many when he was 19, 20 something years. Ah, 20. Do you think God will be unfaithful not to reward him for 20 something years? If a pastor, you won't bless us. If a pastor gets blessed, there's something, there's a sakara going on. Something is behind. I think this one is not genuine. You will not bless us. A pastor also sows, sows his money, plans his businesses. No, we don't believe this guy. You want us to remain poor. Hello? It won't happen. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Amen. Lacked anything when I sent you? No. Because I've already made provision ahead for you. That's what ministry is all about. 
If you serve people, people will serve you. Hello? If you help people prosper, they will also help you prosper. Hallelujah. If you serve people, people will serve your needs. Paul said, you shall not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treaded the floor. Meaning that if the ox was the one that plowed the floor, then why are you stopping the ox from getting its daily bread? If I preach the word of God to you, why are you refusing to share your goods with me? That's what Paul is saying. I wish Paul were to be living in our days. Paul, Christians of our times, they prosper and they'll tell you, Pastor, we are going to a better church. Ah, so what is wrong with my church? You, we will talk about, hey, brother, when you were in need, we were the better church. Now, you're okay. You're okay. So our church is not the better church for you. God be with you till we meet. Yeah. Two months, then they, when they come, they start sitting at the back. Then you know things have not worked. The better church didn't have the anointing to see them through. And you're like, oh, pastor, uh, we, we thought of, uh, 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 brother, why are you here? Uh, things are very bad. It will be bad. It will be very bad, oh, my brother. The Bible said you shall not muzzle. The church helped you, brought you into significance. Now you are in position. You think when God blesses you, we require you, the seed that you are going to sow is what we need from you. No. People have it wrong. Talking to a young man, uh, 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 oh, so you, I'm praying for you. Oh, when God blesses me, I'll come and tithe. I said, ah, brother, you got it wrong. You'll be very late in the blessing. Your motive is wrong. We need your service. Amen. We need what? Your service. One is an usher and at the same time a backup singer. One is a camera person and at the same time leading praise and worship. One is doing that, another person fixing, doing this. This is what defines the significance of a person's position in this kingdom. I'm not interested in you showing up and you just show up and no, no, no. Tell somebody do something in the house, do something. Number three, kingdom leadership is not about selfism. Mr. Leader, it's not about you. Hello? It's not about you. <laughs> it's not about you. It's not about you. Stop thinking that the church is about you. You're in today. Tomorrow, you'll be gone. You'll be short human beings. Human beings. The people that hail you today will not be able to honest with you. When you are gone, they will forget you. And that's human nature. So you see, kingdom leadership, when God calls you it to do anything in his house, stop thinking it's about you. About you. No. No. It's about a people. A people. He said, we were people in darkness. Now we become a people living in the light. A peculiar people. A holy nation. A people without blemish. Called to show forth the glory of God. No, no, I'm not standing here to preach and everything is about me. No, no, I want to create an effective system. Very soon, when I'm not around, the church has to run effectively. So about you. If you don't give me the microphone, I won't come to church. If you don't let me sit on my favorite chair, my favorite chair, I'm not showing up. Ah, if pastor does not mention my name in the preaching, it means I'm, no, 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 it's not about you. Amen. It's not about you. Hallelujah. Because this thing, your reward is not from man. It's from God. The Lord that sees in secret. That's what the Bible said. You remember when Apostle Pencil came and preached here? How many remember that? Didn't, that had, it was the first time I met him. Approached uncle and said, you, your faithfulness. How many remember that? He said, your faithfulness. Didn't know anything about him. Didn't know anything. Why? How was he able to pick? Because God sees us in secret. Am I helping somebody? It is not about you. It's not about us. Whatever you have been given to do in the house of God, it's a privilege. Amen. So it's not about selfism. It's not about selfism. I'm the only one who knows how to play the drum. The day you think Nebuchadnezzar thought it was about him. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 
He one day stood up and said in his palace, uh, look at this Babylon that I've built. And that same time, the Bible said, and a voice told him, you, you become an animal for seven years. May it never be a story in the name of Jesus. Don't get to the place where because of what you know to do, the enemy will lie to you. It is the same trick. Satan taught it was about him. Amen. And that's how he gets all of us. You have been in that position before. In leadership, one of the tricks is that you would, when people begin to hail you, if I were you, do you know the secret? Run from the hills of people. Run into the secret place of the Most High and hide there. Because human beings, Jesus in John chapter 9, he said, nah, uh, uh, the, the, Jesus knew what was in man, so he never relied on men. And he said, uh, the day cometh that I have to do the work of the one that sent me. Night cometh when I can no longer work. If I know how to preach, it's never about me. Hello? Am I helping with the 10 myths? Just to debunk some myths about being called into leadership and, uh, and how human beings would always be human beings. Don't believe us. Today when you are singing, they say, hey, immediately you finish singing. They will look around and say, the very same people that were hailing you said, that guy, that guy, yeah, yeah, boy, huh, you don't know, that woman. They hailed you a few minutes because it's in our nature. We did it to God. Amen. We did it to God. Huh, we do it to you. It's not about you. It's about the people God has called you. What makes me pray for everyone in the church? Keep praying, keep believing, fasting. Someone, my wife is talking to me and says, are you listening? No, I, I'm listening, but I'm not listening because my spirit is already gone somewhere. Amen. Then I'll go, what were you saying? So you are not listening to me. I said, no, I picked something in my spirit. They said, okay. So it's not about me. Whatever gift I've been given has never been about me. Amen. Amen. It has been about the people God has given us. Hello. And if we fail to serve these people with a gift, we've missed it. Hello. Am I helping somebody? That is why you see the mind, like like I was saying, we have to charge you before we pray for you and all that nonsense. That mm. Amen. So it's not about you. It's not about you. Hallelujah. Number four. King Herod, uh, self King Herod stood up and orated after he had killed James. He had killed James, wanted to kill Peter, but the, the, the church began to intercede for him. And Peter, then he stood one day, began talking, and the very same people said, This is not the voice of man, it's the voice of God. And instead of him saying, All glory goes to God, he said, he, 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 The same, an angel struck him, and his body was eaten with maggots. It's in the Bible. Be very careful. Whatever you know to do has never been about you. And stop thinking, stop being a petulant adult, petulant child, petulant believer. Amen. Amen. I brought my food to church. When they said we should do a get together, nobody ate my food. So I'm angry. I'm not bringing food anymore. Petulant. Who said it was about you? Your assumptions might not necessarily even be, be what the majority were thinking. Hallelujah. People just sometimes easily forget. It's not that they wanted. There's no gang up. They easily did what? Forget. It's as simple as that. Take your food home and eat it yourself and bless your soul. They missed that opportunity to eat your food. It's their problem. Hello? So it's not about selfism. It's never about you. It's never about you. Tell somebody it's never about you. Number five, myth about godly leadership. Number four. Number four. Oh, kids. It's not a popularity contest. My name has to be there. A talk us. People have to know me. It is not a popularity what? Contest. That we want to prove who, 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 who crossed the line first. No, 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 no. It's not about any of them. Those things are not necessary. It's for children. Children compete and want to know who came first. My daughter Jada will, would always be having a banter with her brother. I win. 
Jared finishes food first. So mommy will say, oh, so Jared, Jared has finished this, finished this food. It doesn't mean he won. <laughs> I said, girl, it's not about competition. Am I helping somebody? It's not a popularity contest. Be careful that people don't force you into that popularity contest. The enemy is waiting to strike you hard. You know the danger when, when, when you are deceived into that popularity contest and Satan attacks you. Your rising up becomes a challenge. Amen? It's not a popularity contest. We are not called to prove who can preach better, who cannot preach better, who can sing better. Ah. It's not about service to God. Service to God and mankind, St. Teresa. Amen? It's about service to God. If I sing up to this point and my sister takes over, it doesn't mean my sister has done better. Neither does it mean I've done worse. It means that we've all given our best to God. That's what matters. Amen? If I preach... And another person takes the preaching and preaches. It doesn't mean they've done worse. Neither does it mean that I've done uh, better. It means we've served the way God wants us to serve. You church members, you, you church members, you drive pastors into the so-called popularity. You, you, you. Well, I didn't like this one preaching. Preaching is not about you liking it. It's about the spirit of God speaking. Hello? Talk to me, talk to me. Wave your hand and let me know you're being blessed. You church members, you church members, you church members. You have your own preference. And then you start dividing. And, and Satan fills many of you with evil. You come and sit here, then you start dividing the house of God. That's why your life is where it is. Amen. Leave, leave the men of God alone. Allow God to work on them. Allow them to do what God has called. You are not in to show the one you like, who's preaching you like and who's preaching you don't like. Abba. So, in so doing, guess what we create? We make icons. He's the popular one. If he's preaching on Sunday, I'll show up in church. If the not so called popular one is my favorite preacher. In, in this for about three years has been Derek Prince. So boring. That Englishman knows how to preach, but very boring. But by the time you finish listening to what he's preaching, it, it's not about uh, our popularity. Stop pushing us to that popularity edge. Each man will benefit from their own work. Am I helping somebody? Hello? Each man will do what? Benefit. See, see, Jesus was only popular with one person. None of his disciples, not even his mother, the centurion, when he was hanging on the cross, there was only one person. Jesus was popular with only one. All of them were standing at far off. Do you know what that means? Hey, my friend, if you are going to die, you die. Hello? And there was a centurion standing right beneath the cross. When all of them were standing at far off. Oh, oh, yes. Hey, my boy. Oh. Oh, Jesus. After all, all the big, big saying, eh? so they could kill you. Oh, hey, was it not this guy who raised the dead? Hmm, hey. Hmm, nah, maybe. Ah, well, they were far. there was a centurion, first time believer, had never been a disciple of Jesus. Had not, the first time he had an encounter with Jesus was when he was hanging on the cross. But he was the only one who could say, truly. Truly. This is the son of God. One person. Where are you going? Amen. Stop, stop pushing us. Amen. You want to force the pastor to be what? He's not. Oh, that church is doing this and that. And it's working for them. So I believe, my friend. Me and Fiwe may have decided. <laughs> hey, I made a decision many years ago. I will not be forced by any of us here to preach a message I'm not used to. Amen. If you think that pastor in that property is doing well, you can join that church. Hallelujah. Am I helping somebody? I would rather wait on God to live longer than to go ahead of God and do things he's not. Have you forgotten one day you will stand before God? I would also stand before God and each will be judged according to his words. That day I cannot say, God, it was grandpa. Grandpa was the one that advised me. 
Grandpa will have his own judgment. And God will take, my friend, Grandpa is not the Bible. Hello? <laughs> grandpa is not the Bible. He said, but God, Grandpa was a church father. He said, Grandpa is not the Bible. My friend, come and receive your judgment. Then, Grandpa will go before God. Having known and had a revelation, would have repented of his advice. And God has said, thou faithful, thou good and, and faithful servant. And I'm like, hey, hey blood, hey blood, hey God. What are you saying, man? Ah, he is the one that advised. I said, no, 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 no. Thou good and faithful. And you, we are looking at you. In heaven you enter, but you will go and live in heaven somewhere. Oh, oh God. I prayed for Minister Kofi. He said, yeah, but that is where you belong. No, 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 no. Amen. Let's be careful. Church members, let's be careful. You see, many of us create problems. Set heads together. Saying things which lacks honesty because you're emotional and the enemy has gained access to you. And the spirit that is even controlling you, you don't even know. Am I helping somebody? Amen. So it's not about popularity. And, um, Number five, and, and if people will give us recognition, still on popularity, it's because the apostle says, those of us who preach, we deserve double honor. Amen? We deserve double honor. Hallelujah. So if somebody walks up to me and says, Pastor, here's a blessing. Don't stand somewhere and look at the blessing they've given me and think, hmm, hmm, we've been working out, they don't recognize that. No, I deserve double honor. Amen? What should have happened didn't happen because that night a God reminded me I stood in the gap and prayed for you. Hallelujah. Am I helping somebody? And uh, I'm talking too much, I know. And the last one is that. And number five, we can continue the next time. Godly leadership is not about let's do it anyhow and go. In Ghanaian parlance, let's do it anyway and go. Hello? <laughs> Let's do it anyway. It's not about mediocrity. Hallelujah. If you have no sense of commitment, commitment, you are not welcome here. Amen. I'm being honest. You are not welcome here. If you have no sense of uh, effectiveness, we don't need ineffective people. We don't need uncommitted people. We need people who would die in the battlefield with the children of God. Amen. Am I helping you? Look at our time. Our time. We show up in church. You will come home. But we have to wait for you. Hey. Now man wants God to wait for him. Tell somebody we, we repent. You said it. I didn't say it. So from next week, there's got to be church. Ah. 2.30 and you are not here. May the Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. And Daniel chapter 6 verse 3 it says the Holy Spirit is an excellent spirit. Amen. So in the house of God, this is the way it works. God requires that we do things excellently. Excellence can take time. Hallelujah. Especially for those of us who come from Africa, one spirit that will chase you for the rest of your life is the spirit of mediocrity. And so we have to fight it to make sure things are excellently done not because you want it to be done it's got to be done at all costs no 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 amen and then we can continue the next time hallelujah the first myth is which one number one it's not about are you sure number one this kingdom is not about number two It's not about personal gain. Number three, it's not about selfism. It's not about you. You, it's not, we, we are not in church because of me. Hello? It's not about me. It's about God. Am I helping somebody? You're not in church because of a preacher. Amen? And if they don't give me the microphone to preach every Sunday, I'll be angry at the people. No, no, please, please. It's not about you. You don't matter. In the larger scheme of things. God is only using you as a conduit. To bless you. 
And that's that, that the other side people easily forget. If you're able to stand in front of people and serve them, it's a blessing that comes back to you. Amen. Then it's not about popularity. Then we don't, it's not about mediocrity. Let's do it because we are in a hurry. We want to, we want people to know we are here. Let's be quick. My friend, let's do it fast. Gonna fast. No, no. <laughs> it's not about that. It takes time. Amen. It takes time. Tell somebody it takes time. Tell somebody it takes time. Kindly stand. So church, you see, we, we have a responsibility. What really touched me is the fact that let's be careful. Wait, wait. Church members, listen. Let's be careful or how we set pastors. Oh, that pastor knows how he's the... No, 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 no. Amen. You are not called to receive from any preacher. You are called to receive from one preacher. Hallelujah. Don't assume one is more anointed than the other. No. Lift up your hands with me. Father, we pray and commit ourselves into the hands of God. Thank you for this privilege. This opportunity. That will understand that leadership that you called all of us into positions of leadership that by your grace we will excel in Jesus' mighty name amen I understand some of the kids will be writing their exams I'm not sure which one some of the kids will be writing their exams and we have to pray for them and Blake are you writing an exam it's, uh, it's, uh, go out there and tell Auntie Alberta that the kids that will be having their exams they should follow you make sure they are following you amen lift up your hands father we pray and we give you praise thank you the same night that you were betrayed you gave us a principle an assignment to follow and that you gave us your body and broke it for us and you gave us your blood that by now we know now without the shedding of blood there's no forgiveness by your blood father my life and uh, let's be quick and make the two line let's make the two line quickly 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 so we can pray for them you are going to write your exams you stay here you stay here yes yeah, stay there all of you stay there all of you stay there. Okay, wait for me. Oh, let's make two lines, please, church. Let's let's be quick with it so we can easily. Let's be quick, let's be quick. Kids, wait. Nobody moves. You're gonna write your exams. We have to pray for you, okay? That's the reason why you're here. And all of you should put in your best. I hope you studied. Let's be quick, let's be quick, let's be quick.
Kindly, kindly stand up. They're going to write their eggs out. Sat. And I want us to stretch our hand on them. Okay, let's be quick. Once. Do you know if Edwin is writing an exam too? The mom is here right now. Stretch your hand on them. I want us to pray for all of them that God by his grace. The Holy Spirit is a reminder. Amen. He's a what? A reminder. That he will remind them of everything they studied. And that they will come out excellent in Jesus' mighty name. Kindly let's pray. 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 That God, your presence will be with them. If there's anyone, any child here, anyone not here, who is writing their exams, we pray the same grace that by your grace they will excel. Doing better, come out doing better. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. God richly bless you. Go in the courage of God. Go and write your exam and excel. Okay? God bless you. Now you can leave. Hallelujah. Take your offering if you came with your tithe. If you came with your tithe, your offering, uh, I've taken enough. Do you want to then give us something? Go, let's go. Cook something, Ben. Be quick. How lovely and the mountains at the feet of them who bring good news. Good news. And now we be proclaiming words of happiness oh. that I got What's happening tomorrow? Uh, what's happening tomorrow? Uh, bank holiday what? Bank holiday what? Bank holiday what? Lift up your hands. Let's pray. Commit ourselves. Tomorrow we are meeting here. And uh, there were special people I especially invited. I invited. I gave them special invitation cards. Uh, bank holiday what? Prayer. Hey, Mr. Chuku. Eh? he's a feisty one hallelujah we are praying tomorrow we are meeting to pray amen the theme of the prayer is removing every evil veil hallelujah and I explain it to you until Lot departed Abraham couldn't see anything there are certain veils spiritually covered that we have to remove 11.30 to 1.30 please listen 11.30 to what time I don't want to take the rest of your chilling day. It's going to be sunny, isn't it? So I don't want to take the whole day, 11.30 to 1.30. If you come early, I promise you by 1.30, we would have finished. Amen? Amen. But if you come back at 12.30, I would need my two hours. <laughs> and that will eat into your time. So please, please, tomorrow, Sister Abna, we bless God for your life. Uh, she was very ill, but we thank God she's here to eat today. Uh, call uh, Mam Sewa. She's not doing well. She has this strange cough. We pray. And uh, Sister Dorothy had a uh, bus accident. Is that the Ambridge the way, did he? <laughs> uh, she was coming here uh, last week when the bus had an accident. And I think it shook her, so she had to. But I want us to pray. So we, Mom said, well, let's lift up your hands. And we are praying. Commit them into the hands of God. Commit them. And a host of other people pray that God himself will secure them 
deliver them in the mighty name of Jesus. No sickness, no strange sickness, evil sickness, whatsoever be it, will prosper in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Now we are praying tomorrow, we are meeting here. May God give you the zeal, the power, the strength to stun and remove every evil veil over your life, out in your life, in Jesus' name. Lift up your voice, Alessri. Lift up your voice, Alessri. Lift up your voice, Alessri. We are meeting tomorrow when we get to stand here and pray. May God remove certain, deliver us from the hands of evil. Deliver us from evil coverings, coverings that have no significance to our lives. Lift up your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Kindly bring your prayer to an end. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for strength. Thank you for grace. Thank you for insight. You will grant us utterance and the power and the strength tomorrow when we gather to pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So if, if the, uh, some of us didn't turn up, Call them and tell them tomorrow, I, I demand them here. Hallelujah. And that I said no excuse. Amen. God richly bless you. See you tomorrow. So will uh, minister see me. God bless you. God bless you.